Welcome, 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 everyone. I see we got friends filing in already. Hello, welcome to the first webinar in Curators 2024. We're really excited to be here. My name is Steve Smith. I am joined as ever by our CEO and our co-founder, Mr. Jimmy Mackin. Jimmy, I'm really excited to talk with you today here for these 2024 seller advertising strategies. First thing I wanna make sure is that everyone in the chat is feeling welcome, that they that they are excited to be here too. So go ahead and do me a favor if you're here in the chat. I see over 100 folks have already come into the the, the room already. Go ahead mm -hmm. and let us know. Let us know where you're where you're watching from. I see Elizabeth from Toronto. We've got some North Atlanta. We've got we've got representation immediately all over the place. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to see so many folks joining us today. Uh, Jimmy, I have to dispel one key piece of information before we dive in, which okay. is how are we going to tell all of these people about 2024 seller advertising strategy? That just feels like several too many. <laughs> well, we, we've been known to squeeze many, many ideas into a short amount of time, Steve. There was, there was only one time, Steve, now that you bring it up, there was only one time where I wasn't able to finish a presentation, and that was in Raleigh, North Carolina, where I had 150 slides for a 45 minute presentation. And in my mind, I said, I said, I can do this. I can get through this. And probably about halfway through, I'm realizing, well, I'm going to have to land this plane because there is no way I'm getting through this. Um, so thankfully for today's session, we have learned our lesson and we are, uh, we're going to give you just the right amount of information to make sure that you're taking some great takeaways from today's session, Steve. Indeed, indeed. Before we dive into, uh, I'll, spoiler alert, it's, there's going to be five seller advertising strategies yes. to use in the year 2024. Uh, before we do that, though, we are curious about your approach to advertising, your experience with advertising. We want to make sure that we are speaking to your experience. And so we're going to drop a poll in the chat right now uh, yeah. in which we'd love to hear from you. Jimmy, are you dropping it? Yeah, I can drop it for you, Steve. Okay, thank you. So we're curious, as we're about to begin this session, what is the biggest challenge that you historically have faced in advertising? Is it developing the creative, coming up with the ideas and building the actual campaign itself? Is it launching the ad campaigns, getting them out there, putting the advertising box behind those campaigns to make sure that they're being seen? Is it building the landing pages themselves, part of the creative itself, but the more technical side of actually getting a quality landing page that's going to help generate those leads? Is it the, the measurement of the ROI, measuring that your campaigns are working? Or is it, as as I see so many folks have already put in there, a little bit of all the above? Mm -hmm. So just take a couple of seconds to fill that out if you haven't already. Thanks to those of you who have already jumped in and filled out that, that poll. We're always curious and want to tailor our content as best we can to help folks where they are in their business, in, in their challenges uh, to help them succeed. So thank you for taking a, taking a moment. Steve, we are already getting bombarded with the the age of AI. I, I can't get oh, yeah. over this when when we have so many people who are jumping on with AI right now with us. Uh, so for so first off, thank you for all the humans that have showed up, and thanks to all the bots who are here today as well. Steve, let me share the results with with you as well. So right now you're seeing, and everyone should see this on the screen. About twenty percent of you saying, "Hey, creative, the ad copy, the ad image." Uh, launching the ad campaign, it's a technical know-how, getting into the ads manager or into uh, Google, building a landing page, not that many people struggle with that, measuring if it's working. And you see the vast majority of people, almost 60% are saying, hey, it is uh, all of the above. Ryan is claiming he is a human. Ryan, prove it. You have to be able to like, maybe maybe I see more misspellings in your comments. I'll know it wasn't ChatGPT that actually created it. So Steve, let me let me start before we talk about the state of the union because I do want to talk about that. Let me just give a quick 1 minute on advertising. Uh we have a jam packed session. We got some great ideas for you. At the end of today's session, by the way, just a quick quick hook here, at the end of today's session, I'm going to be sharing uh an email campaign that we've been coaching curator clients on that have been generating more listing opportunities than probably any campaign we created in the last six months. So we'll give that away for being a part of today's session. We'll give that away at the end of today's session. Steve, let's start by saying and stating what I think is controversial, but it's true. 
is advertising and real estate is fundamentally broken. I mean, if you were look at the landscape of advertising today, it, it, it's it's not what advertising is intended to do. Advertising at, at a high level is designed to raise awareness that you exist, speak to a customer's problem, get them interested in your brand, your offering, your product, your service. Uh, it's meant to be a positive in, uh, interaction. Like the first time you see an ad, you're supposed to feel this sort of warm and fuzzy. Oh, that's interesting. Let me explore more. Let me dig a little bit deeper. That's, that's what advertising... It's supposed to have that positive visceral reaction. Advertising in real estate has become programmatic. It has become, let me just automatically run ads on Facebook. Let me get someone over to an IDX landing page. Let them look at a few photos. And then once they view a few photos, let me force them to register. And then we're surprised when that person doesn't pick up our call, doesn't respond to our text message, isn't interested in our email because we are now following up with them aggressively. And I think advertising, I, I mean, we are ripe, Steve, for an advertising revolution. Advertising is such a powerful way for really good real estate brands to grow their businesses, but we've got to change the mental model. We've got to break away from the shackles of force registration IDX, which is, it, it's, it's a pain in the ass for consumers. And it puts you in a position, Steve, where as the agent, you're constantly having to chase cold internet leads. So I want to go on the record here, Steve, and saying like, there's a better way. And, and we're going to hopefully inspire everyone today with some different strategies and tactics that they can use that they maybe will hopefully get better results from their advertising, Steve. I think that's the hope. That's why everybody's here, right? Is I, I think, I, I'm curious, drop in the chat if you agree, is real estate advertising fundamentally broken? I keep thinking about like, I don't know that many people, realtors included, who are happy or who are in love with the quality yeah. of ads and marketing in the real estate industry right now. So mm -hmm. I'd love just, yeah, I'm seeing some hundred percents and yeses. Yeah, it, I, it's, it's a deep question, but are you, there you go, saturated. That's a, that's a really great, every, a lot of people who have no idea what they're talking about. I think yeah. it's a lot of better sameness, people trying yeah. to look like someone that they saw who didn't come off as embarrassing, but yeah. at a certain point, it's just kind of a, an echo of an echo of an echo. Yeah. of something that you saw once that seemed okay. Uh, not too much sales, not enough education. Yeah. Yeah. I, a lot of, yeah, really, really great sentiments here. So I think we're all on the same page. We all seem to agree. And so what we're hoping to do here in sharing these seller advertising strategies today is to inspire and to coach you into being able to feeling empowered to actually create more compelling, more engaging advertising yeah. campaigns. That's the, that's the intent. And I, again, I think for me and Steve, I know you pulled the deck up here in a second. We'll break down the strategies, but for me, it comes down to this basic idea that advertising, like, advertising doesn't have to be terrible. And, and if you would never register for your own ads or opt in for your own ads, then why do we expect consumers to do the same? And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you why this is important because on the buy side, it's kind of easy. I mean, buy side advertising, like show them a couple homes, get them to register. Yeah, sure, that works. On the sell side, sell side advertising is an entirely different ball game. I mean, a seller is not going to hire you because they saw you post a picture of a listing on Google or they or you have home search on your website. I mean, this is where marketing, I mean, we're seeing the rebirth of like really good copy and creative and angles and the value of that. So Steve, let's... Uh, Let's, let's, before we dive into the advertising campaigns, one last thing, one last thing, actually in the chat for us, let us know, are you more optimistic about 2024 than you were about 2023? Just in the chat, let us know. Are you more optimistic about 2024 than you were about 2023? I mean, like Steve, look at the comments. For those of you who are going to watch a replay, who won't have the comments. The answer is 101%. <laughs> I love that. Uh, so here, here's the thing, is that if you go back and you look at what you have survived over the last 18 months, I mean, whether it's the interest rate hikes, whether it is all of the techno crypto bros who were you know, uh, claiming that the real estate agent was going to go extinct and the, the market was going to be in a housing crash, whether it's all the media companies who literally spent the last 12 months telling everybody that the sky is falling. Or if you look at the billions of dollars that were poured into prop tech 
to disrupt you, the real estate agent. If you look at the last 18 months, I mean, agents have survived such an incredible onslaught of negativity, of challenging market conditions, of the so-called disruptors trying to put you out of business, and we're still here. And I'd make the argument, I'd make the argument that the real estate agent is undisruptible. I mean, find me another professional service where there's been billions of dollars poured in to put you out of business, and the percentage of consumers who use you is actually going up. And so I think these ind these individuals, these companies, and these startups are realizing that maybe the real estate agent, the model isn't as broken as they might think. And what I mean by that, I was telling this to my wife over the weekend. Uh, you know, we're talking about all the changes that were happening with NAR and the decoupling of commission that we see kind of prevalent in our industry. I said, tell me, tell me a situation where you can work with a professional who will do a service for you completely free of charge until you actually are successful in your goals of transacting, buying or selling. I mean, they will show houses, they will, they will answer your questions, they will help put in offers, they will negotiate all of which their time, their resources, their investment goes into it. And only if you are successful, you will pay a fee. I mean, it turns out consumers like that deal. And if we, and I think if agents were to say, hey, listen, we'll charge up front and we'll charge nothing on the back end. I think a lot of agents would take that deal. It turns out consumers actually like the deal of being in complete control of their destiny and not having to come out of pocket up front for professional services. I mean, Steve, when you look at the landscape of professional services, you can't go to, let's say, a defense attorney and say, hey, I need you to defend me in this lawsuit. And if I, you're successful, you will, then I will you then pay, pay you. <laughs> like, like that doesn't work that it way. It sounds preposterous, actually. It, it, and so it, it, I see I see why outsiders would see, oh, this is a thing that we can probably capitalize on. It turns out it's actually one of those places where the consumer feels in the most control, which is typically what we tend towards. So I, I, that's a fascinating perspective. It, 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 it's it, the I, I, this is my theme for 24. The real estate agent is undisruptible. And you know what? Jason's right. Agents pay for things up front. They actually, the right word there, Jason, is you invest in a client's relationship in hopes of, if you're successful, getting a return. But the customer is in complete control. We as agents cannot force people to sell and we cannot force people to buy. And so we're willing to make the investment in our relationships with our customers. And so that means for us as agents, we have got to do a better job communicating our value proposition because in the absence of doing that, the 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 media or the, the the NFT bros are going to say we are dinosaurs. So I think there's see if we can dive into the examples in a second, but we have got to control the narrative and we got to stop telling people it's easy, it's simple, it's fast. We got to show them that no, this is a hard thing to do. And thankfully, you've got a pro who's got your back who can help you achieve the goals you're trying to achieve. And oh, by the way, if it doesn't work out, don't worry, we're still here the next time you want to give it a go. Like. That, that's a deal, Steve. I mean, that is a deal that consumers clearly are willing to, to willing to take part in. Absolutely. So like, like you mentioned, there's been billions of dollars poured into this industry in an attempt to disrupt it. One yeah. of the things that we're going to do on this session is leverage what some of those billion dollar companies have been trying to do and say, let's figure out how do we interpret their work and how do we adapt it? <laughs> How do we yeah. leverage it? How do we get smarter and better yeah. from all of these efforts to disrupt us? So, Jimmy, let's talk a little bit about some of these companies and some of the angles that we want to, uh, let's say, borrow, adapt, and create from what we've seen from them. Yeah, take us, everyone take a screenshot of this page here, whether it's Open Door, Home Options, Ramsey, Sun, Sunday. Talk about a name of a company, Steve, Sunday. Um, maybe IceCreamSunday.com was taken. Sunday, Clever, which has some great work on research. By the way, Clever, is it Clever or Cleaver, Steve? C-L-E-V-E-R, Clever, right? I mean, that's how the word Clever is spelled, but sometimes in tech bro speak, maybe it could be C-L, maybe it's Cleaver. C L, but someone I, but yeah, help us. Like How do you spell cleaver? Me. Yeah, so with an A, uh, C L E A V E R is, is cleaver. Oh, okay, so yes, so it'd be a weird name to call your company cleaver. Uh, so clever, cl uh, shout out to clever. They they do some amazing seller centric research. If you're not subscribing to the newsletter, they they put up they actually put up some great stuff. The reason all the the reason I called out these companies, and you'll notice that Zillow 
isn't actually on this screen, or at least I don't see on the screen, is Zillow gets the vast majority, and I think Redfin probably follows in this category too, but Zillow gets the vast majority of their traffic organically from people who are, have their apps and or have are visiting their websites. So it's somewhere north of 85% of their traffic is like, it, they don't go to Google and search Zillow, they literally just have the app or they go to zillow.com. Everybody else on this list, except for being Redfin and Realtor, has to buy advertising campaigns to raise awareness. So they're in a hyper-competitive direct-to-consumer market. So what we did for today's session is we actually broke down some of our favorite favorite examples of really smart ads that these direct-to-consumer companies are using that we can adopt for our business. So Steve, if you go to the next slide for me, we've got five angles here. So we we take we've looked at we've done a ton of research on this. We've dug through a whole bunch of examples, and what we've done is we've identified sort of five angles that we see that are repeated often, whether it's Google advertising, Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, video advertising. These are the sort of five most common angles, starting with the cash offer, the buy before you sell, the compare options, the traditional what's my home worth, and then the last category, which is seller specific needs. And so what we're going to do in today's session is we're going to go through each of these angles and give you real world examples to help inspire you. So when you want to start advertising to attract sellers, because again, at Curator, we are all in on listings and you should be too. If you want to start attracting sellers with advertising campaigns, like we're going to give you the cheat code. Here's what these other companies are doing. Here's what they're investing in. You can rip off and duplicate these strategies. Steve, anything else on the screen you want to dive into before we talk about number one on the list? I, th I think we should probably just rip it off and get into number one. Um, I want to make sure that our audience knows that as as you're looking through these examples, if you're if you have a question, if you have a, a thought on interpretation on how you would translate it to your business, drop it in the chat. I want this to be as interactive a workshop as possible. So ask questions, share what you've done that are similar things, things that have worked for you. Share your thoughts as you see some of these ad concepts uh, and, and definitely raise your hand and ask questions for sure. So okay. let's uh, let's dive in and take a look at the cash uh, offer. The cash Cash offer. Yeah. So we can go to the next slide here, Steve. So no one has done cash offer better than Open Door, in my opinion. Um, and so what you're looking at right now, a few things I want you to focus on. We'll start on the left-hand side and then move, move to the right-hand side. So the first thing you're going to see, not in all ads, but this is a common theme that we're seeing. And Steve, you probably can pick up on this instantly, is that they are not including a ton of copy when they use direct response advertising. So if you look at the actual copy and text, see what we pay for your home if we made you an offer today. I mean, they don't talk about what a cash offer is, how the, the process of applying works. It's like, boom, hit them right with like direct response, make it simple, easy to understand. And what you're seeing is there's a little bit of a continuity. The image that they're using, Steve, is one that like is clearly real estate oriented. And then look at the text that you have for the link, which is opendoor.com, enter your address to find out learn more. And so there's a connection, Steve, it's important between the copy and the CTA. Now, notably, what Open Door is also doing, and you see this kind of often, skip the showings and cleanings. What they, what they often will do is they'll include sort of a secondary value proposition. And so what, they, what, what good advertising does is they'll say, what's a pain point that a seller might have that we can maybe shine a light on? that we can then include in our advertising campaigns to get a seller interested in learning more about what it is we do. And so actually in the chat right now, do me a favor. Uh, let me know, do you have a cash offer solution? Because many of you, most of you should have this. You should have. You should be able, to be able to partner with a company. You should be able to talk to your team leader, talk to your broker. Uh, Mary in the chat, Mary Maloney, share some insight there for us. If you don't have a cash offer, I mean, like talk to your colleagues, talk to your team leader. There are services that can enable this. Now, here's what the, here's the reality of cash offers. Cash offers, there's like a good way to do this and a bad way to do this, Steve. The bad way is we buy uglyhouses.com. I mean, like it's the like 70%, 65% of the fair market value of a property. 
and it's like really aggressive, cheesy kind of marketing. I, I personally like the idea of is a cash offer right for your home as an angle, as opposed to we will buy your home right now. Because what consumers want to know is if you're trying to deal with a traditional seller who's not a distressed seller, yeah, they may want to explore a cash offer. They're probably going to move forward with listing an with listing uh, with their agent because Steve, they don't want to take a fifteen to twenty percent haircut on the fair market value of their home, especially with low inventory. So what I would say is like the idea of how you present these cash offers is is it right for your home is a question. It opens up that curiosity. It's something that gets starts the conversation. It's not about like get a cash offer right now for your property because I think that would that attracts Steve, a distressed seller who likely is going to be more challenging to work with than a traditional you know residential resale as an example. Well, it dilute it could dilute your brand. It could dilute your value proposition. Looking yeah. at this the right way as a conversation starter, as a way to generate more leads and lose fewer leads to larger companies, but to initiate the conversation so that over the course of that conversation, you can demonstrate to them the value and the experience of working with a real estate professional. That's the, that's the idea. So I love the way that you phrased that there, Jimmy. Is it? Yeah. Is it something that you're interested in? Is it right for you? They might yeah. be wondering, is it right for me? Probably not. But if they say to you, probably not, at least they've, you've initiated a conversation that begins there. Um, we've got some folks looking for recommendations around cash offer companies in the event that they can't, in the event that they don't have one already. Yeah. I'd love to hear from the chat. We've got, we've got several hundred real estate professionals in the room right now. Yeah. we got some great, great, some feedback. So keep sharing those ideas. Two more things to call out before we move on, Steve. I love the, I love the cross out angle with the creative like get an offer in months, weeks, days, minutes. I think it's a really smart kind of way to like, if you're saying like, is a cash offer right for my home? Like you could use that as a smart angle. I love the personalization with the image. Green, green, uh, Greensboro. And I love this line. This is really smart. I would actually send an email out right now with this line. Uh, everyone knows I like to write emails. Uh, is does your home qualify? So like that's a subject line. Does your home qualify? Hey, what you might not know is X percentage of consumers sold their hat sold sold their house as a cash offer in the last, you know, whatever it was, you know, quarter, year, whatever it is. You might be wondering, does your home qualify for a instant cash offer? If you're just curious and you'd like to learn more, just reply to this email with your address. I'll get you all the information. So I love the like, does your home qualify angle because it creates a little bit of uh, attraction. Not like, hey, sell us your house, which is the, you know, we buy ugly house angle. So just another call out there, Steve. Yeah, the, the uh, it might not be for you, but X percent of homes in our market sold via this type of program in the last year. So yeah. you're getting some magic words in there. You're getting to educate the consumer. If it's a small percentage, you're showing them, oh, it's actually like going with that is not the thing that most people go with. So there's that's actually reinforcing probably not the thing I want to do. I'd probably like to sell with an agent if I do it. But it's it's demonstrating your proficiency and your knowledge about your market while creating an open ended conversation. Let me give some stats on that. Yeah, let me give some stats on this. I know we're going to give another example. But before we go to another example, um, Open Door regularly reports on what they refer to as their real conversion rate, which is the percentage of consumers who go to opendoor.com, request a cash offer, what percentage of them sell their house versus what percentage of them uh, sell their house to Open Door versus what percentage of them actually list with a real estate agent. So here's what's, here's where it gets interesting. Follow the math here. Uh, a hundred, if 100 people come to opendoor.com, to fill out a cash offer, historically, about 34 of them actually end up listing their property or selling their home. Of the 34 that sell their home, historically, with Open Door, about one out of every three would sell it to Open Door. So in the 22 and before 22, like 21, 22, the first part of 22, you'd say 34 people sold their house, and of the 34 people that sold their house, about give or take, you know, 13 or like 12 people decided to sell it to open door. 
recently because open door no longer can pay more for a home than it's worth uh that number has dropped and this they've given some estimates on their earnings calls that number has dropped to about 10 percent. so what that means is for every 100 people that actually request an uh, an offer on open door 34 are going to sell their house and only about three to five would accept a uh, an open door offer. What, what that means, and the, and the takeaway you should take away from this is that the vast majority of people who request a cash offer actually end up listing with an agent. But more importantly, the leads that you get from people who request a cash offer are converting at a ridiculously high rate. And so will it happen in the first 30 days? No. Lead follow-up matters, especially when it comes to any type of lead generation, postcards, door knocking, sending them mailers, giving them free CMAs, making phone calls. Like you got to do the blocking and tackling. You can't expect layups here. However, if you're looking to get a pool of people who are going to sell, a cash offer is a great angle or hook, Steve, that you can use. So Steve, let's go to the next slide here because we've got some more examples for everyone. Shout out to Sunday.com. It's a little hard to read, Steve. I'm not sure if you can adjust on your kids. Clear on my end here. Let me just see. Uh, I might I might take over screen. Yeah, maybe. I'll, I can zoom in a little bit. if it's. Yeah, like let us know in the chat. Can you see the copy well, or is that just my screen? Let us know in the chat, because if you can't read the copy. Okay, yeah. So, Steve, I actually Larry. have. Let me try sharing on my end. Bear cool. with me one second. Uh we should be able to get a little clearer here for you. And it might just be, it might just be zoom. And at which point there you go. Okay. Take two. Is that clear? That's much clearer to me. Okay. Oh, cause someone said, Nope. There we go. Hold on. Oh, way better. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. There you go, Steve. It may be Turns our out. first webinar of the year, Steve, but we are not rusty here, my friend. We're not rusty. We know what we're doing. And, and everyone oh. just got a brief ophthalmologist check. Just to, <laughs> or opt, uh, not ophthalmologist. That's a bird doctor. Optometrist. Everyone <laughs> got a brief eye exam just to Steve, see how we're all doing in 2024. Uh, when you said, I, I believed you the first time. I was like, yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> nah, I think uh, that's birds. So the... For, shout to Sunday. Icecreamsunday.com. I don't know what the domain is. Someone help us with the domain. I love, I love this image. Like, in the chat, let me know what you think of that image. Like I love, so if you've got these cash offers and by the way, by the way, forget about investors. Maybe you do a buyer angle here, Steve, like think about that for a second. Like how many, uh, I got my guy, Charles King on the call. What's up, Charles? How many buyer leads do you have in your database? You know, and if you can say segment your buyer leads by location, you could say, okay, I've got 750 uh, people who are looking to buy a home in Medford. And that becomes an ad for Medford or Chelmsford or Plymouth or wherever else you're located. So I, I just think just as a call out, Steve, are you considering selling your insert the location of your house? Um, I don't really love if I'm going to be critical. I don't love the don't delay. I think it's cheesy as you know, I think it's really cheesy. Contact Sunday today to start receiving cash offers. Okay. I love the bad copy. Great image is my assessment. Like, and so the image is just so rock solid. So what I would do as a takeaway here, Steve, if I want to spend some money in advertising, I would go to my database and follow up boss or Lofty or Boomtown or Brivity and say, okay, let me segment my database by what are the biggest buyer pools? And it's kind of like the magic buyer letter. Hey, we've got buyers who are looking for homes in your area and create an ad just like this one. I'm just a huge fan of that Sunday ad, Steve. Yeah, I think I think it's great. Um, as far as like developing a visual vocabulary, um, that's something that as far as like developing a brand kit, developing your brand identity. Yeah. Um, obviously, not everyone's going to have a, a graphic designer in house, but that kind of idea is being being able to create things that don't look like every other real estate ad. Uh, it yeah. does kind of pop. So that would be a that would be a, a, a little pro tip there as well. So we're going to move on from cash offer here. I'm like Steve. Next slide, but now I realize I'm in control of the slides. You know. So there it is. Um, Orchard does a fantastic job. I mean, this is a brand I want everyone here following. If you've been following me for a while, you know how much I love this brand, Orchard. Skip the stress. And they kind of just value prop, value prop, value prop, you know, and then get a cash offer. And I, I like how they use in this ad, like they kind of use a uh, dictionary visual, like what is a guaranteed offer? An assurance that your home will sell, Orchard. Like it's smart. Uh, know your home, your home will sell in Texas. 
Again, I think you got to be clear, I think you gotta localize that a bit more. These are large companies who are advertising to a large group of people. I do think you should personalize it. Consumers want a local expert. So whenever possible, use local copy in your images, in your ads. Uh, I'm a huge fan of that. All right, Steve. Last thing here. This is a, we we grabbed an example. Like advertising isn't just digital, advertising can also be mailing. And what you're looking at right now is an example of an open door letter we got online of the things they were sending to consumers to get them to opt in. And so what you'll see, I know this is gonna be hard to see regardless, but if you look at the left hand one, Steve, uh, so first off, sell your home for all it's worth. That's really not true for cash offers, but okay, we'll go with it. They include a range, which I think is smart. And then if you go to the very bottom, it says selling to open door, service costs, 6%, uh, other costs, uh, zero to four percent days on market zero days on market question mark i mean i do like the comparison angle although to be clear i think it's complete bullshit i do like the i do like the comparison angle of like uh a versus b what i would do in that scenario is rather i, I might send a, a postcard steve says which option is best for you and i would list out like uh, the cash offer, I would list out the traditional resale and I would list out like a, you know, like a co compass concierge style, like, you know, invest and then sell, right. You know, fix and repair or like a refresh package. And I would like, like give us a call or text us which option you're most interested in. So I wouldn't even use a cash offer, like a versus I would use like a comparison as an example, if that makes sense. I think so. I think so. Um, any questions in the chat about that? Or I think that's pretty straightforward. I do think that the three different comparison options is probably the right way to go there. If you've got local data, if you've got recent sales that you can cite uh, yeah. current market stats, uh, just to enrich the the, uh, the 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 knowledge that you're giving. Let's see, these companies are mainly in metropolitan markets. Agents in smaller markets have an advantage. Exactly. Not just in, uh, as Jimmy mentioned before, customizing it to speak with your copy to a more specific uh, segmented group, but also with your actual data that you're able to provide as well. Yeah. Steve, can we just talk about, by the way, Open Door does a great job. Shout out to Open Door. I mean, like, yeah. It's never a good good sign when the CFO becomes CEO, but like th they do it from an advertising perspective, they do a great job. Like, you know, you got credit where credit is due. Notably, when you look at this, Steve, a couple things on the letter, I, I really love how they kind of give estimates up front and they say, hey, check your current home value here. I love how they kind of reinforce the value. Pro and I know it's a little bit crooked here for you. So just turn your head, um, get your cash offer, skip the stressful process, choose your own closing date. But I like this idea of like claim your offer today. And I absolutely love the door hanger, Steve. I mean, the door hanger in the chat right now, let us know. Do you use door hangers? Okay, we got a few people saying, yes, I do. Okay. Uh, for those of you who are using door hangers, um, like, like let us know like if you like how you currently use them just to kind of share amongst the community who's on today's call. I really like the open door door hanger, um, which is, and you can adapt this for a postcard to be clear, but I really like the open door door hanger, which is uh, like, we just bought a home in your neighborhood. So flip that. We just helped someone buy in your neighborhood, you know, or we just sold a home in your yep. neighborhood as an example. Um, they just do a great job of like, there's a instant credibility, see that you get when you say we just did this thing in your area for someone else, buy or sell side, I'm just a huge, huge fan of that strategy. As am I. I've got. I've, I'm seeing some hands up in the chat, so I want to make sure if anyone's got hands up, you can go ahead and send us a chat directly. And then uh, Catherine, I want to make sure. Yeah, we're we are recommending that you take inspiration from a lot of these concepts, tailor them to your market, to your business. So we're absolutely trying to leverage some of the best yeah. advertising campaigns and concepts that we see. And we want to help you turn those into angles and campaigns that you'll be able to use to start conversations and start helping people in your market. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Helen, Helen asked a question, what if it's a good condition to resale? I can't fulfill a cash offer. This is why you would say, see if your home qualifies for a cash offer versus, hey, here's the actual 
cash offer. Uh, and by the way, Open Door has partnerships to fulfill some of the stuff. So you should probably talk to Open Door if you're looking to have a partner. I do, I do know they do fulfillment as well. Uh, I love how all the prop tech disruptors uh, in 2021 were saying, "Hey, you know, we're here to disrupt the real estate in industry." And Steve, in like 2023, like you know, we see real estate agents as partners. partners. <laughs> yes, a lot of really great partners in this industry. So we're seeing a little bit, of, a little bit of that piece here. Um, so, th so this is another example of an open door campaign. Screenshot this again. We're here to inspire you that cash offers are great. Here are a couple examples of different strategies that are not we buy ugly houses.com rather they're like i think done well to help inspire you in your local market steve absolutely um so i think we're, we're going to move on from cash offers i think this is our last slide on cash offers so yep. i would definitely make sure that if you take a screenshot of this we will be sharing a replay as well so you'll get access to this um but yeah so i want to as we as we, we're about to move on to our next concept uh, mm -hmm. I want to ask one more question of our audience, just again, trying to to understand where you are in your business. We're curious, what is your advertising budget that you've got allocated for 2024? Uh, so we're going to drop that poll in the chat right now. Uh, how much money do you plan to spend on advertising per month in 2024? I'll go ahead and launch that, Jimmy. Thanks, Steve. And yeah, and so we just go as a fill in the blank. We just want to get a sense of where agents are in their advertising budgets, just to get yeah. a sense of um, because some, like, we're obviously talking about Facebook ads a lot through this. We're talking about print. We just shared some examples of that, uh, mm -hmm. and so we know that figuring out where to put your dollars is important. But also, it's about how many you're starting with, and so we want to be able to continue to tailor and customize what we talk about on these sessions all year. Uh, to really help the audience that we've got showing up. So yeah, go love ahead that. And fill out that question for us if you don't mind. And while that while that's pouring in, Steve, uh, we had a question in regards to or some good suggestions on uh, like how people are using door hangers to invite neighbors to open houses, which makes sense uh, to promote a recent sale. Makes sense to promote a you know home or you help the buyer buy. All of that makes sense, right? Using that as inspiration. All right, so see, while, while the answers are coming in here, let me jump into the next one to keep things moving. Yes, the sir. buy before you sell. Now, I shared this in our private curator mastermind group. I, I am like obsessed with this ad on the left-hand side. But what you're looking at right now is, uh, this is what we refer to sort of as a bit of a situational ad, which is in many instances, we have pent up inventory where people are afraid to sell their current house because they think it's going to take them forever to buy a new house. And so what you're looking at right now is uh, Orchard does a great job kind of advocating to consumers that, yes, you have an option. And so right now, in the absence of information, this is important, in the absence of information, consumers are going to be indecisive. I mean, the easiest decision to make is no decision. And so if consumers don't know that they have a buy before they can sell option, or they don't understand that buying and selling where it's challenging, you as a professional real estate agent can help them navigate that, 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 that strategy, then what will happen is like they will be in a position where they're just going to sit on the sidelines until they find the home. And then they're going to try to buy that house and sell at the same time, all within like a, you know, one week period, which probably won't work. So what Op uh, Orchard is doing is Orchard's really putting a big emphasis on the buy before you sell movement. Now, here's the thing as an agent, what I would do with this tactic and actually let us know in the chat right now, did you help someone this year? Did you help someone this year sell their home, follow the logic here, sell their home and then buy a new one? So in 2023, did you help a seller sell their house and then buy a new one? Okay, so here's my question. It's yes, 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 yes. Hey, Diane, good to see you in the call. Uh, okay, how long on average, how long did it take you to help them find their new home? Was it six months? Was it 12 months? Was it five weeks? On average, how long did it take you once they sold their house to buy their next home? Just drop in the chat right now. Because Steve, here's the reason I'm bringing it up. People who do not want to sell their house because they don't have a new home to move into are sitting on the sidelines. And what they don't realize 
is that whereas for most consumers, if they if they don't have a home to buy, they're gonna like, it's gonna take me forever. And in their mind, they've already told themselves a story that, oh, this is gonna take me three months, six months, 12 months, maybe take me the whole year. But for most of you, not all of you, but for most of you, you are gonna help them find a house within 90 days. In fact, everyone in my family who has sold their house last year found their new home within three months in a ridiculously low inventory market. The reality is, is once you're in the market, there's likely going to be a home that's going to meet your criteria, I'll be compromised, that you're going to want to buy. So what I would do in this case, Steve, this kind of buy before you sell angle, is you can tell the story, which is on average, we help our sellers find their next home in 17 days. And so it's not necessarily buy before you sell. It's like sell and buy within the sort of same time frame. And I think what's missing from our advertising and our marketing is those stories. So you've got right now, everyone who's listening right now, you've got sellers in your database who want to sell their house with you, but have not picked up the phone and called or text or emailed you because they haven't found a house to buy. So they're literally just self-serving at this point. So what I would do, Steve, is if I was listening right now, I would create campaigns regularly to say, hey, we helped our seller find their house in 14 days. If you're thinking about selling your house, but you haven't made the move quite yet because you don't know what you want to buy next, we can help. We've done it before. We can do it for you. Like that's the angle, Steve. Yep. Dispel the myth, reduce the fear, tell real life examples that showcase that there mm -hmm. are plenty of people that you've helped go through the exact situation that they are currently operating from a lack of information yeah. and a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty that you'd be able to, oh, here, here's like three examples of that. So continue to run those campaigns, tell those stories Think about making your testimonial content in this case of this orchard ad bite-sized. Yeah. Have Correct. it as a larger profile on your website. Tell it as a long, long form story via email, but don't miss out on the bite sized, easily digestible, the pull quote, the biggest piece of information as an ad or as a social post that you can get out there. Yeah, I love it. And you're looking at, you know, again, the goal for today's session was to inspire you, to give you some ideas and strategies that you can say, okay, let me let me kind of expand my creative thinking on this. We want you to walk away with saying, okay, it's time to revamp our advertising strategy. It's time to sort of, you know, put ourselves in the mix here. Like it's like let's no more search for homes on my website. Like like let's let's break away from that that old paradigm and let's say this is good advertising and here's a couple more examples of that and steve real quick what was the average budget on advertising uh from that poll just to uh, share that i have not been able to access the actual answers okay we were on a, such a good streak steve i know uh, we the, the rust was not even <laughs> perceptible and now here and there we go it's like okay in, within so we got some we got some answers so Hey, hey, Amy, good to see Amy on the call today. So this is like the, the people are using kind of the monthly budget. So we're looking kind of like probably north of a thousand bucks. Steve, I'll let you dig. I'll set, I'll drop that link so I'll let you dig Thank into you. it. But probably north of a thousand bucks to- I'm, uh, I'm seeing enough thousands and then enough that are a bit above that, that I think it's going to balance out. I'm going to, if I had to guess, probably in the 12 to 1500 range. Yeah. Yeah. Right around there. I just dropped the link for you, Steve, so you can you, very much. you can explore. I know how to use computers. Here we go. Okay. Um, all right. By the way, another killer ad. I this remember I was talking earlier, Steve, about like the idea of of like showing the time on market or showing like how quickly you can help someone buy a house. I actually love this angle here of um how much how much faster you as a professional real estate agent sell houses than everybody else in your MLS. So I like this kind of old way, new way, but I also love the visual of this calendar. Like I think this calendar really tells a story. And so it's, so I, this is not necessarily a buy before you sell. Well, this is a buy before you sell ad, but this is like this, con I want you to kind of wrap your head around this concept. This concept is Steve, include a testimonial and then kind of highlight a, you know one of the key things you're great at, which is selling homes for faster than the competitor. So in the chat right now, I would say, if you're not tracking your days on market compared to your competition, you're missing out. You've got to track that data because that's information that we want to get in front of the consumer. Keep in mind, the challenge we have with real estate is better sameness. 
There are hundreds, maybe even thousands of people who sell real estate in your area. We have got to differentiate. Mission number one. That's what we got to do here, Steve. Okay. So Steve, we got 15 minutes left. Yeah. I want to point out that a lot of these ads have been on Facebook and we had a nearly one in five of the respondents to our poll earlier. One in five of the folks on this webinar said that the deploying of the actual ads themselves was a challenge for them. We want to talk very briefly about a Facebook post tool. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to show the visual here, but what I'll say is, because we, we always get asked the question, what do you do at Curator? We actually have a whole bunch of Curator clients on today's call. So I would love for uh, our, our buds who are on today's call to to share some love and tell tell what your experience is like working with Curator. Um, and yeah, Amy, was, I, Amy, I figured it was $100,000 a year, not month. Otherwise, things are going really well. Things are going great. There in hey. Maine. <laughs> no need to apologize uh, for doing well. Yes. Um, so we got a couple of C buds in there, but just real quickly, uh, just a quick plug for Curator. Um, we are on a mission to help our clients get more listings. We want to help them win their listing appointments. We want to help them keep the listings. We want to help them turn their listings into more listings. We are a marketing company. And that is, that's what we've done for a very, very long time now, over 10 years. So if you, if you are interested in learning more about Curator, and if you're interested in getting listings and you want to take your listings and turn it into more listings, uh, drop your zip code or postal code in the chat right now for us, because we are exclusive by market. We're very limited by market. We only want to work with the best in a market. Thank you so much, by the way, Ashley, uh, uh, for dropping the love there. Great to see you in the community, Ashley. Drop your zip code in the chat. My team will reach out your postal code or your zip code. My team will reach out afterwards to kind of give you the full rundown and see if it would make sense for us to work together. But for everyone who's tuning in right now and you're interested in learning more, you definitely drop a link in. Thanks, David. Appreciate the love there, my friend. Um, we are on a mission, Steve. I mean, we are absolutely on a mission and we are trying to help agents get more listings this year. And we're doing so doing so through some really innovative technology. We've got some crazy technology, uh, technology updates we've been rolling out as well as some new things coming out this month uh, that I'm just incredibly excited about. So by all means, if you're looking to learn more about us, drop your zip code. What's up, Charles? Thank you so much. Yeah, Charles has been with us for about a year now. Uh, great to see you on the call today, Charles. Hey, Shelly. Um, so we got a lot of C-Buzz on today's call. It's great to see everybody we here. Do. We do. Uh, it's okay, Charles. I, I still do. I still spell it that way as well. All right. So let's keep rolling. And again, drop your zip code or your postal code. The team will reach out to you after this session. Steve, let's keep things going. Compare yep. your options. Now, I tripped over this, Steve, earlier when I was kind of giving the examples. But well, we I'm so excited about it. It's one I know you love this example. <laughs> and so, yeah, even when you look at other ad concepts, it's like, yeah, wouldn't it be better as a compare your options, though? So, yeah, well, you got a little bit of a teaser, a little bit of a spoiler on this one. So uh, go, go ahead and click through to the next one there. And yeah, yeah and you could take a look at some. I think these are some really, really compelling, creative uh, using really great images. Yeah. But I, I, I love these ads. And for me, Steve, it's a great example of like, if you have a cash offer, a fix and flip, a traditional resale, this is a fantastic way, a fantastic way for you to sort of highlight all the different options. So it's not like hiring an agent or doing FISBO. It's like, here are the different options and then let the consumer choose which one makes sense for them. And so what I would say is the great thing about advertising, like uh, direct response advertising, it doesn't just have to be an ad. It could be an email. You could take the same concept and turn into an email. You could you could have this as a CTA at the end of your videos. So as an example, Steve, I might say, I might do an educational market update. And so what I would do here is I would jump in and say like, hey, we wanted to give you an update on what's happening in the market, let you know all the details about pendings and sold and days on market and, and, and what buyer demand is looking like right now. And at the end of the video, you might say, okay, if you're thinking about selling your house, but you're not sure where to start, one of the, our recommendations is, is to compare all of your options. That might be a cash offer, that might be a fix and flip, or that might be bring it to market with a professional real estate agent. Drop a DM below and we'll reach out to you with more details or comment below and we'll reach out to you with more details or DM us and we'll reach out to you with more details. Like add the advertising angles as a hook at the end of your videos or at the end of your emails. Extend it beyond just the ad campaign, Steve. It's a brilliant concept. Let's I just, let's keep it moving. I know we're down to the last 10 minutes. So let's yeah. talk about a, fair, a fairly traditional uh, piece of content, fairly traditional yeah. real estate ad type. 
but some folks who have done it very well. Steve, across, yeah. I, well, I, 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 before today's call, I said, Steve, I think we can do this webinar in 30 minutes. And what I meant was an hour and 30 minutes, Steve. I, I misspoke on that call. Uh, so what you're looking at right now, Steve, will you tell me, Steve, um, which of these ads jumps out to you? When you like you have the home value angle, which one is jumping out to you first? I mean, almost because it is so Oh, hold different. on, Steve. Hold on, hold on, Steve. In the, I want everyone in the audience, before Steve answers, because I want you to pollute the poll here, which of these ads is the one that you'd be most likely most likely to click on? Drop in the chat. Let us know. All right, Steve. Let's see what they say. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah. It turns out I my brain is like almost everyone in the chat. Mm-hmm. But now I'm, I'm seeing some... Oh, there's, there's a late... Push for number <laughs> there's three. A late push. There's a little bit of a horse race happening here, and three is coming around the final curve, and it might actually overtake the left. Yeah, interesting. I, so I'll tell you what mine is, but you go first. I mean, I see we've delivered over thirty-eight thousand valuations. That's, that, for some reason, that big number, and I, I yeah. think some of it is again, like I, I mentioned, better sameness as a concept that I'm a little bit tired of. That somehow that that ad doesn't have a house on it. It I doesn't know. have the I typical know. hero header bar with the enter your address in it. So something about it being off speed, a different look of a of a familiar ad actually is the one that's the social proof and it's looking different from the rest. That's what it did. That's what did it for me. So here's so here. So listen, here's it's it's I think I'm, I'm swayed by the audience right now and, and the community is tuning in right now. You're leaning in three. You're leaning three now. So I would describe Steve, uh, I would describe the left hand ad as a brand ad. It's designed, Absolutely. right? It's designed to say, "Hey, we've done this thing." Right. So we've like, done it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So like, it's more like it's it's a, it's more of an establishing trust, your trust us. Yes. Correct. And so, Steve, you could do this from a you could do this from a total number of sales you've had. You could do a dollar volume, but you could pick an activity. As an example, we reviewed 635 offers this year for our clients. Mm. I mean, it doesn't actually have to be the number of homes you've sold. How many That's open clever. houses did you hold, right? How many people came through your open houses? So like, uh, how much exposure did your listings get from your marketing? Like, you know, so there's angles that you can use uh, that around like that big number technique. And on the right-hand side, I think the one in the middle is too wordy. I think the one in the middle is too confusing. And Just I, too much going on there. Sorry to whoever yeah. made that at Redfin. It, it is, right? It's like the Redfin one is, is a little bit like, okay. Um, and so if you look to the left-hand side, I think it's a brand ad. I think the takeaway there is, um, yeah, it's bra John's like, isn't it a little braggy? It is braggy, but it's established. It's it's intended to kind of tell people that you you do a lot of business and it's okay. Like it's, I, if, if I'm going to go to a doctor, let's say I wanted to get plastic surgery and I want to get, what do they call Steve when you get your nose fixed? Rhinoplasty. Uh, rhinoplasty. rhinoplasty. I know. We're, we're down still the mean, that's the meanest thing that any doctor has ever called anything for a person who's sensitive <laughs> about their nose. So like if I wanted to get like a nose job, Steve, I would want my plastic surgeon to have done thousands of other noses. I would not want to be his first like nose John, right? Like this is going weird. This is this analogy is falling apart. You get the point. So I like the idea that there it is braggy, John, but I would say that like that's okay in this context. Now here's it, yeah. The, 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 I'm I'm trying to get past that analogy, Steve. So let me go. Uh like how like get the escape hatch out of that analogy. Go to so the this uh this one on the right hand side though, what I like about it, that what I really like about it, Steve, is I like the fact they the question. How much would you make if you sold your home tomorrow? I just think it's such a great way to go. Hmm. Like, I, maybe I'm not a seller, but I, I'd be interested in learning more. And so, advertising can, can get top of funnel leads and middle of funnel leads. But I just love the copy and the sort of like search box. And I guarantee you, Steve, we don't have this now. If I click through on that search box, the landing page would look exactly like the ad. I'd be shocked if it didn't. It looked like they've done a really, sm a really like brief version of that landing page. It looks like this was probably designed based on the page they made rather than building ad creative and then retrofitting it to a landing page. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm agreeing with uh, I'm agreeing with John in the chat here. 
um around the the billions and billions sold like the 38,000 like it is it's a little braggy but what it's not doing it's not it's not saying we're going to get you overvalue it's 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 bragging about competence yeah. it's not overly it's not overly confident um but yeah and I, I do think that planting the seed again also we're doing a really great job in both of these of not over promising but just creating that curiosity in your mind how much would i make if i sold tomorrow it's a it's a nice thought to go to yeah that's correct and and they would go to a landing page so with curator we've got home value landing pages you could use most platforms will have a home value landing page you can drive them to one of those landing pages from that i will give a disclaimer when it comes to converting seller leads if you're doing like say straight advertising i mean you you need to air land and see uh, kind of approach here. You need to have like you direct mail dialed in. You got to be calling and texting. You got to be door knocking. You got to be doing everything if you really want to drive a real good ROI. What advertising at this level does is it helps. Let, let's say you've got in your farm, you got 5,000 homes. Let's say the average turn, turn, turnover rate is 1%. So Steve, do the math for me. What's 1% of 5,000? What? I'm bad at math, it's man. 50, gonna, 50 homes, it, right? It's, Thank you, Ryan. Uh, thanks, Ryan, for so being on it immediately. Question: I just ask Steve so I can think about what the answer is. So it's 50. So the reality is, is that advertising like this will can basically take that 5,000 person farm and say, okay, we can immediately eliminate 4,000 people. And now I can say, these are the thousand people who are most likely going to sell their house. And so now the effort of calling and texting and emailing and door knocking and mailing makes a lot more sense. The math maths, right? And you can get a better ROI. So this is like the great filter that we can use when it comes to ads. So Steve, last one here for us, specific seller needs. Uh, I'm gonna give you a framework that I want everyone to use. And I want everyone to write this down which is, can I, should I, how do I? So can I sell my house if I owe more than it's worth? Can I sell my house if I just bought it, you know, 12 months ago? Can I, like, go through this scenario. Can I sell my house while getting a divorce? Can I sell my house if I'm unemployed? What are all the different scenarios that you come, that come, can I sell my house if I don't have a new house to buy? Um, these are all like, this is like the, can I, is it even possible? Is the, I, this situation even possible? Should I, should I sell my house if I don't have a new home to move into? Should I sell a house, my house, or should I rent it? All right. These are like scenario based. And then the next one is how do I, how do I sell my house and buy a new one at the same time? So this, this framework if you if you and your team sit down this week and you make a list of all the objections or all the challenges and all the scenarios, you can kind of begin to organize these into can I, should I, how do I, the framework, and then you can use that with your ad copy. And what you're looking at right now is you're just looking at open door using this. Like they're focused on the Ds, Steve, death, divorce, diapers, diamonds, diplomas, right? Like they're trying to say, hey, these are all these situations. Let's make it super specific. And they do, you know, these fancy videos with, you know, actors and they do a good job with it. You can do the same type of campaign, but I think the can I, should I, how do I framework makes that really easy, Steve. Yep. Uh, one of our longtime clients, Jay Marks, he always talks about the actual process of helping a client. He says that every single real estate transaction, we, we handle it exactly the same, except they're yeah. all completely different that that mentality can infuse into your marketing as well your advertising as well that you don't have to wait it's like there 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 can be a little bit of paralysis that comes from waiting to understand a person's situation because you don't want to speak too specifically if you don't understand your audience. This mm -hmm. is a great exercise, like Jimmy just said, to go through with your team and talk about what are the most the most common three, five, seven scenarios that you're getting questions about, that yeah. you're getting incoming leads about, and then say, all right, it's not every single person, but if we create a few campaigns that speak to these fairly common uh, pain points, we can actually really go a lot farther with folks in that initial, that we can show them that we know them, if you will, yeah. by creating better creative upfront.
Yeah, I love it. So Steve, let me come back here. Last one for us here. And as I said at the beginning of today's session, I promised I was going to give away a script that curator clients have been using to generate appointments. Uh, my, my, my guy, Tom Ferry, has been sharing this as well. Uh, I was texting them the other day about the script. I mean, this, this thing just absolutely crushes. And for those of you who executed it, I've got some additional add-ons I want to kind of pitch you on as well. Steve, I'm showing the next door ad campaign. This is basically next door does a, I, I was listening to a podcast probably three months ago and the uh, they had uh, next door CEO on. Uh, she's very, very sharp. And they asked on the podcast, you know, next door now has grown to being, you know, such a, 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 a uh, you know, integrating so many neighborhoods across, across North America. She said, uh, what is your number one marketing channel? And I was thinking this person is very sophisticated. They've got like a CS background. They're they're you know clearly going to say digital, Facebook, Meta, TikTok, YouTube. Her response was direct mail. She said direct mail has been the number one growth lever for next door. And so I, I immediately said, let's find some next door direct mail campaigns and let's see what they're doing really well. And I want to I want to call something out, Steve that I think is really interesting. And I'm actually curious in the chat right now, what is the one thing that you think they do really well on this campaign that would incentivize people to sign up? Can you see it? Like, let me know in the chat. Can you see what is the one thing that Nextdoor is doing to get people to sign up? Let's see if people pick up. That's right, Mandy. It's the expiration date. This code expires in seven days. And so what I would do, if I was going to do a home value ad, like, hey, find out what your home is worth. I might do something like, hey, we're putting together a free CMA, a free comparative market analysis or home equity update. This is a detailed report that will give you all the information about your home. It's going to be much more accurate than an online estimate. We're only going to give away, you know, 50 of these to local consumers scan this QR code or text this number, this expires in five days. I mean, what's going to happen is you're going to, you're going to pull forward all of the opportunities right there, Steve. I mean, and so I just love this idea of having an expiration date with our marketing to create some urgency and to incentivize people to respond. I think Open Door does a fantastic job with this, Steve. You know, I I received an email from Open Door exactly seven days ago or next door rather seven days ago i'm sorry to say they, next door says, yeah, next door thank yeah, you it's next door uh and it, and it has this code expires in seven days so of course i am waiting till tomorrow because i need to know does it really expire or is this a false <laughs> yes. sense of urgency yes. and so that might be a lesson is uh, it doesn't actually matter this is not an expiration date on a carton of milk it will probably not make your recipient go ill if they click on it after the expiration date right it's probably just a psychological marketing trick give it a shot <laughs> give it a shot so steve i promised everybody i would share with everyone uh a script that we wrote for curator clients uh at the end of the year that i released on uh, january 1st and i want to share this script with you and actually in the chat let me know if you've already seen this email uh, so I wrote this email for our clients at the beginning of the year. I said, this is an email that's going to be in your template library. So you can send this email out as soon as you wake up on January 2nd. Subject line, how much equity did you gain in 2023? I'm setting aside a few hours this week to put together a home equity report for my clients. These reports are comprehensive and accurate and, uh, than what you get from an online tool. And then here's the key, Steve. Instead of saying, do you want one? which is getting them to effectively say like, oh, you know, maybe, okay, I'm thinking about, I said, can, I'm asking for permission to be of value. Can I send you one for your home? And that little bit of a twist of like, hey, do you wanna, do you wanna supersize it? Or, hey, can I just grab that for you? That little bit of like going from, do you want this to can I send you one for your home? Creates such an incredible response rate for our clients. And so right now I'm looking at it. Yeah, I love it. Sharon, Sharon shared it with us today. This, yeah, Sharon, Sharon and I were texting back and forth about different like ideas on how to kind of keep uh, keep playing with it. And look at Shelly saying, I'm drowning in CMAs right now. Uh, and so by the way, 
send it exactly as is via an email campaign. If you haven't got responses, it's probably because your database is a little too cold and you got to invest in like consistently emailing your database, which by the way, plug for curator, that's what we do. Um, but this is a campaign. You could do this quarterly, Steve. You could do this semi-annually. You could take the same campaign. You can mail it out. You could text people. You can throw it up as an Instagram story, get people to opt in with a poll. I mean, this campaign has absolutely crushed it. Elizabeth saying, hey, Elizabeth, good to see you in the call right now. 10 CMA requests and three appointments off of this one campaign. I would go one step further. For those of you who've already sent it, I go one step further and I would begin to text all of the people in my SOI who opened up the email. And I'd say, hey, I'm not sure if you saw this, but I sent out an email earlier this week offering a free home uh, value update. This is an accurate report, way more accurate than an online tool. Can I send you one for your home? Like I would double down on this as a way to connect with my SOI. So shout out to the curator community who executed this brilliantly. You're seeing how many people have gotten results. We got 23 responses, five CMAs. I think Dean Linnell out of Whistler is leading the pack here, Steve. I think he had set, actually updated this. He had over, I believe, 20 uh, responses or a total of 25 responses from this one campaign. So wow. send it, get some instant results, then start texting people in your database who open the email to get more value out of it and then repurpose it for social, repurpose it for direct mail. This campaign absolutely crushed. So Steve, on that note, last thing, anybody who's looking to learn more about Curator, be sure to drop in your postal code to zip code. We're happy to uh, connect with you, see if we're a good fit for your business. We are exclusive by market. So share your zip code, share your postal code. Our team will be in touch. And Steve, I want to make sure uh, everyone stays connected to me. If you want to learn more about me and following uh, uh, the advice I give online, I'm on Instagram, Steve. Best place to stay connected to me. Yeah, get in the uh, James got a great Instagram broadcast channel as well. So yeah. while he is active in stories and sometimes on his feed, I think the place you really want to be is in Jimmy's Instagram broadcast channel, sharing great ideas like the ones that you heard on this webinar throughout the month. So thank you to everyone who joined us this time around. It was been a, a very fun webinar. I hope you got a lot out of it. I appreciate how engaged everyone was. So many great ideas being shared, thoughts being shared in the chat. So thank you for joining us for these five seller advertising strategies for 2024. We will see you next time. We'll be sending a recording out. So look out for that. Thanks for registering. Thanks for being here. And uh, I think as Jimmy Mackin likes to say, let's get to work. As Thanks, everybody. You.